Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this one of tutorial, we're trying to learn about social network analysis in Python. So what is social network analysis? So social network analysis, or SNA for short, is just the process of trying to derive meaningful data, right, from a social structure, from a social structure using networks and then graph theory. So it's just a means of trying to derive meaningful data. So what, what do I mean by that? For example, let's say we have this, right? This is a structure, social structure. I want to find the most influential person inside this. I want to find the person who's connected to this person. So in case you want to find the most influential person, that is where social network analysis comes in, right? In case you want to find the, the shortest path to reach a point, right? To reach, let's say I want to find the point of reaching this this guy here. What is the shortest person that I need to use to be able to reach that person? That is the purpose of social network analysis and that is one of the benefits or the applications of social network analysis so to start with it you just need this particular package we have network x or igraph right so you can just use any of this package and then if you know one it's easier to apply the same principles on the next one so in, in case you're on windows or any system you can just go to install network s or you can just go with this particular option now let's see the terms so the basic terms of social network analysis that you have to understand what the graph is so a graph is just a wise relation between objects and an entity so if you see take something like this this example so this is an object is another object right so there is different different objects in trying to find the networks between them the links between them that's the basic idea about a graph so between between them we have nodes we have edges and then the links right so the nodes are the individual objects so this is an object this is an object this is a node right so a node is simply an object or a person or, a, or an entity or a vector, right? Then you have edges. So an edge is just a connection between them. So this is, if you take this one, this is a node, this is a node, this is a node, and then these are the edges, the connection between them. Then, just like a picture speaks a thousand words, right? Just like this picture, I was able to make it understand very well. The same way, word, the same way like a video speaks a million words and a, a graph speaks more than 10,000 words. So it is, if I've shown you this picture, you know that it's a picture, but if I show you this, graph the picture you are going to understand it more so let's start with it so what are some of the usefulness of social network analysis so first of all the usefulness of it is to help us to find the most influential person in a network and also to find the relationship and connections among entities and objects and also help us to detect hidden patterns right for example like for detection can also be used to help us to find the optimum route for supply chain for drug and drug relief for even uber to help us to find the maximum coverage which are like those in, when you watch movies, they tell us they will be showing that they want to triangulate or triangulate this person. That is where one of the applications of SNA. So it can be used for part optimization, social network analysis itself, can be used for most influential person in the fraud. So now let's start working with it. So we have already started to, to work with it. Just have to import it first of all. Let's just increase the size. We're going to be import network S. Then we're going to first create a node. So we are we are working with individual nodes. These are individual people. So you have to first of all create them. So the first way of creating a node is just first of all we have to initialize the graph structure. So there are several graphs. We have digraph, multigraph, and then a simple unigraph. Right? So we are storing it as G. Then we're going to add a node to it. So to add a node, just go G, add the node. So you'll be adding a node of Obama and another node of Trump. Again, in case you, in case you want to add multiple nodes, you can just put it in a, in a list like this. Then just add it. So you are adding Obama, Trump, and then Hillary, and then Michelle, right? Michelle Obama. Perfect. So the next way is that after adding a node, we want to see the node that you added. This is the node that you created. This was an empty node. So if you are checking from here, like, it's going to, this is an empty node here, right? So this is an empty node. But the moment you add nodes, in case you want to view the nodes within, let's go with g.node, right? So it's going to tell us all the nodes we have. So we have Trump, Hillary, and Michelle. So in case you want to find or create relationship connection between them, then you just go with add edge. So you can just add an edge between Obama and Michelle, which is husband and wife, Hillary and Clinton, husband and wife, Trump and Ivanka, husband and wife, Trump and Clinton, who are a uh, presidential meet, Obama and meet, pre presidential meet, right? So these ones are not husband and wife, but they are let's say presidential. That is a connection between them, right? Presidential election, something like that. Perfect. So that is the connection you have found between them. So you have built relationships, you have built edges. So in case you want to visualize these things, you can do that. So in case you want to add multiple relationships to add several connections between them, just go with the same format as add edges from, just like this one was add node from. So in the same way, add edges from, we're going to add multiple relations using a list, right? So you are connecting 
them together. Now let's see the nodes we have created so far. So you have the same nodes with some new ones, Frank and Mitch added. Now in case you want to view the connections, you can just go with G dot edges, right? You want to list all the edges between them, which is very interesting. Now let's see how to get more information from this one. To get more information, let's go with ng index right dot info. I've been seeing ng for all this one. Now, in case you want to visualize this, which is where you get more data from it, and just go with there are several methods. You have the ns draw for network x draw, then you have draw networks, and then it's the layouts are usually random, but it can be specific, right? So the ns draw is just going to draw it without creating a label. But in case you want to create a label, you should specify it. And then ns network ns draw dash underscore network x, you want to draw it with the label. So now let's see what we're going to do. We'll be using matplotlib to help us with that. Then we go the first method is that well, the, the default method, right? Without labels, it's going to create without labels. So this is the stuff, right? So you can't. It's very good, but you can't see the names, so it's not helping as much. In case you want to see the names, just go with G, right? Draw G with labels, then set it to true. You want to draw it with the names, which is very interesting. So you see that you have that it changes it. Right, so that's why I'm saying that the graphs are usually random. Perfect. So we have mate here, which was actually here, right? But because it changes, you can't you cannot see it. Then you have Obama, you have Trump. So it's going to draw it in a very simple and a very nice way so that you can actually see the connection. So Obama is connected to Trump, Trump is connected to Ivanka, Ivanka is connected to Michelle, and so forth. Okay, perfect. So the next method is that you can just do the NGS draw, right? It's going to automatically draw it with the names, which is very interesting, which is totally different. Just change it from this. To something different okay so you can also use micro lip to increase the size to make it bigger it is going to make it more bigger than the previous one so that this is bigger that's changed right perfect so this is quite a nice graph anyway now let's see now to get more information to make it more specific i can just use a spring layout so let's try that one so just going to initialize the spring layout and you just draw your stuff so it's going to make it quite interesting. So we have Mitch here, we have Obama connected to Trump, and then connected to Mitchell and connected. So this is quite interesting, just like this is also interesting. Okay. Now let's move on to some analysis you can do. So, so after plotting them, you have to be able to derive information from it. So some of the analysis you can do is that degree of centrality. So degree of centrality has to do with the most influential person, right? The number of nodes and the number of connections. So let's try to see that. In here, I want to see how many people are connected to Obama. How many people are connected to Obama? So we have Ivanka is connected. Ivanka is not connected to Obama, but Trump, Clinton, Michelle, and then Michelle, right? And then Mitch are connected. So we have four. So to find the people who are connected to Obama, just go with NS dot degree G, then Obama. Four people, right? Same way, case I want to find the number of people are connected to Ivanka, which is here. We also do the same thing of NG gram, then only two people. If you look at the graph, the only people who are connected to Ivanka is Trump and then Michelle Obama, right? Perfect. So that is some interesting stuff. So in case I want to see the two are connected to Mitch from the diagram, you can just see that it's only one person who is connected to Mitch. So let's see whether it's going to give us the correct answer. And only one person. Perfect. So we have been able to find the degree of closeness, right? The, the not the degree of but to close to find the people who are connected to one another. Right? Perfect. So now let's see how to find the most influential person. So before you do that, you're just going to see the people who are directly connected to another person, which is the closeness centrality. It has to do with the directly connected. So if you look at the diagram we have, the person directly connected to this is Mitch, right? Or maybe the person connected to Clinton. Here is from Mitch is Obama. So that is what you're trying to find. So now let's see what you do about that. So you just use the format of NS shortest part, then a graph, then a node, right? So that is going to calculate the distance between them. So this thing can this thing that we have here can be used to apply can be applied to find the shortest route to a particular place in maybe normal Uba and all, all those translation stuff. If I check it to the shortest link between Obama and Clinton is Obama and Clinton. The shortest link between Mitch and then Ivanka, which we saw from here, we realize that from here we have Ivanka is here, then Mitch is here. So the shortest link is how do you think it's going to be? <laughs> Let's see this graph for that. So we have Mitch, meet, meet, I've been saying Mitch all along, right? Meet to Ivanka. So, what is going to be the shortest link? So, we have Michelle here, right? And then we have uh, uh, Ivanka here. We also have Trump here. So, what is going to be the shortest link? So, from this, you can see that the shortest link is going to be 
can go with Mitch, then Ivanka can go with Trump. But by mathematical formula, it is particular theorem, Trump is going to be the shortest. So let's try to see. So if I run this again, it's going to be so we have Mitch, Obama, Trump, and Ivanka. Not instead of it being Mitch, Obama, Trump, uh, Michelle, and then Ivanka. Perfect. So that is a basic idea about the shortest part. Very, very useful. So that's one of the applications. You're about to find the shortest part, the most important part to apply. So in case you want to reach Ivanka, you don't need to pass anywhere. You have to just pass to Obama, then Trump, then get to Ivanka. You don't need to go through Michelle to be too long. <laughs> okay, then the next method you can also find that the degree of centrality, which is to find the most influential among them. So this is very, very useful, especially if you are doing social network marketing. You want to find the most influential person, if you give the most influential person, then that most influential person will be to help affect a group of people, right? So to that, just go with NGS degree of centrality. So this is the most influential person. So based on the ranking, we have Obama. So to, to be able to connect to anybody in our graph here that we have, you need Obama. So if once you get Obama, you'll be able to influence a lot of people. Very, very interesting based on the graph that you expected. Perfect. So now let's see what I mean by that. So we have been able to find that 0.6, then after that, follow Trump. So from this stuff, our degree of centrality depends that the most influential person among them is Obama, then Trump, before Hillary, then the rest. The list is mixed, right? It will be. Now let's see another centrality you can find, which is the most important connection. So it's not important for you to know. The most influential person but you also have to know the most important connection this is whereby if if i'm connected to obama then i am very very important then i mean that this link or this link is more important than anybody this link connected to this because once you're connected to obama you know obama so you have that link is very very important so the agent how do they put it the agent vector is usually help us to know the most important link, right so do you know who i am that's the question that is usually, usually asked do you know who i am related to do you know who I am related to. Do you know that I know this guy? That is when, when to use this particular formula. So let's try that on the C. So this is how it works. So Obama is having the most important connection and Trump just because they are the most influential people, which makes sense anyway. So that is how to do that, right? So if you know Obama and you know Trump, then you are good to go. Now let's move on to betweenness centrality. So betweenness centrality has to do with betweenness or bridges, right? This may help us or connect this. So who are the people that connect you both together very so that is how to do that. So it's going to go with NGS, NX, between us, centrality. Then when you check it, we realize that Obama is a very good person that, well, Obama is a very good betweener. From the diagram, you realize that Obama is a very good betweener. Between Trump and then Mitt, Obama, between Michelle, you have Obama, very, very important. Between Clinton and then Mitt, you have Obama. So Obama is a very powerful betweener, right? Bridge. So that's the basic idea about this. So with this same type, we to predict association if, it's the, if the data is very broad with the entity cluster, and then we just make it as 1.6, and then this one, right? Okay, so that's the basic idea. So thank you for watching this long tutorial, and stay tuned for the next aspect of trying to use another data set to you to work on it. So in case you have any question or contribution, you can just put in the comment section below, and then please check the links below for some interesting stuff in case you need help creating your data sets or doing any other stuff, you can check the link below for some interesting stuff. Thank you and stay blessed.